Well, it seems Hasbro's having a bad day. Paramount has now rejected a Dungeons and Dragons TV show. Well, who saw this coming? You know, Hasbro has the big hit with Baldur's Gate 3 under Larian Studios for video games, but no one wants to continue making their brand. No one wants to have anything to do with it because now they're shopping it around again. Before we get fully into the article and the video, do yourself a favor and subscribe to the channel today. I cover things from Hasbro, I cover a bunch of gaming topics, I cover topics mostly in pop culture, video games, and movies alike. Dungeons & Dragons live action series not going forward at Paramount Plus will be revamped and shopped by Hasbro. This is bad news. Where is this picture from? This looks horrible. That's supposed to be Dritz and his team? That, that, that's gotta be super old. That's from two, two games? You know, surprisingly enough, this is from Dark Alliance. I never saw this screenshot from the game. And now that I'm looking at it with, with more detail, this doesn't look any better than the reboot series from uh, Mainframe that came out back in the 90s and 2000s like that's a very old series how old this game makes it look it's not to the current standards i gotta say i played the game i own the game and i never associated it with this with this picture on how basic it really does look no wonder nobody wants Hasbro. Uh, exclusive, Paramount Plus has opted not to proceed with the live action series based on Hasbro's widely popular Dungeons and Dragons fantasy role-playing game franchise. The move comes almost one, uh, almost a year and a half after the Paramount streamer in January, 2023, gave the project an eight episode straight to series order. At the time, it was co-production between Hasbro owned E1, which Hasbro sold and took a bath on that sale, they bought it for like $4 billion and sold it for 500 million, which had developed the series and Paramount Pictures. Now shepherded by Hasbro's in-house division, Hasbro Entertainment, following E1's December 2023 sale to Lionsgate, the project will undergo a creative update before taking out two other potential buyers, both production partners and platforms, sources said. Meaning it wasn't uh, it wasn't DEI enough for Hasbro's standards. They're just going to completely ruin Dungeons and Dragons as a brand more if they can ever find someone that can tell their story. By the way, have we heard anything about the Magic the Gathering Netflix cartoon that was supposed to come out? That's still up in limbo. I still haven't even heard of anything about that in the last little while. I know they lost some directors and it's just gone poof. It's disappeared. Another project gone. Well, Deadline didn't have a ton of details on their story. So over to IGN, Dungeons and Dragons live action series scrapped at Paramount Plus as Hasbro works on creative update. You know what that means. Um, Deadline, however, reports that the revamp will include certain creative team, so it's unclear where that leaves Thurber, Silverallo, and other versions of the series. Hasbro had no further comment beyond the Deadline report when IGN reached, uh, reached out. The unfortunate news about the series comes as Dungeons and Dragons finds itself in a bit of a moment. Publisher Wizards of the Coast recently announced a slew of new project plans as the property gears up to celebrate 50th anniversary while Larian Studios Baldur's Gate 3 drew impressive revenue for Hasbro thanks to a licensing deal but Larian has now said that they're no longer going to work with Hasbro on anything towards a Baldur's Gate 4 like I originally said in my video back a long time ago now. Uh, Hasbro still, however, announced a massive round of layoffs affecting more than a thousand employees last year. Hasbro's laying everyone off and they can't find anyone to shop their product around because nobody wants to pick it up anymore. Over on the big screen, the franchise finally got a first, uh, first film embraced by fans and critics alike with Dungeons and Dragons Honor Among Thieves. It underperformed at the box office, though calling into question any sequel possibilities. It hasn't been clear whether or not Dungeons and Dragons TV series was meant to connect Honor Among Thieves in any way. The Deadline article kind of touched that. Uh, if this 
adaptation of Dungeons and Dragons is to see light of day. It won't be the franchise first run at television. They originally had the Dungeons and Dragons cartoon back in 83 to 85. While poorly reviewed D&D movie came out in 2000. Yeah, that movie was abysmally bad. Dungeons and Dragons. I mean, where is it today? It, it, are, the new version of the book that came out looks absolutely atrocious. Yeah, the new version of the book. I, I've spoken to a few people in, uh, in DMs about this. and Nothing too crazy with it. Um, things that I've seen online is the whole cover looks like it's all women um, in, in the book going the opposite way there's talk that the dragon in the background doesn't quite look right uh it, it's really strange the dragon to me looks more like the the traditional chinese style dragons that you get in some movies and some some fantasy where the elongated neck but it's very questionable on the way it is is that his body in the background? Is that his, is that like a wrapped around serpentine body? It's really strange because the neck, how the neck comes around, it's a very strange perceptive version of this book that they're putting out there. This is also in the year that Dungeons and Dragons is turning 50 years old and Hasbro is sanitizing the new version of it their anniversary book they're putting in cliff notes they're putting in many other things this is stuff i'm hearing and seeing for the new anniversary book that it's just not going to be a true telling of what it once was we've spoken at length how wizards of the coast and hasbro has sat there and changed the definitions or removed words from magic the gathering and dungeons and dragons similarly to try and make it this all-inclusive language censoring the way that they speak and the way that they bring up different things in these games trying to push their esg score their environmental social governance scores higher with these changes well it doesn't work in the long run it's not going to help the uh, consumer understand the type of game that they're going to be playing or diving into maybe they can lose themselves in dungeons and dragons and sell out the many many games that are out there but the pandering for it all is just absolutely impressive at this point you know, I've covered these topics quite a bit on the channel with Gary Gygax and the way things have been of the past. It really is a shame that they're trying to bury the past and put disclaimers and put all these things to rest and say, we own it now and this is what we're going to promote now. It's not what it once was and it never will be the same, which is really unfortunate. Anyway, thanks for watching. I'm your product name, Phoenix Center Shadow. Have yourselves a great day. I will see you again very soon. Don't forget to like and subscribe.